Okay, welcome to our first hands-on chapter in this module where we're going to be looking at lists in Squarespace. It's a relatively new feature and it's still finding its feet a little bit. What you'll find going through this particular module is that lists can be very powerful, but they can also be limited in other aspects as well. It really is a double-edged sword. For example, it allows you to create layouts and styles that we couldn't have created before without using third-party plugins or code that, for example, we've created to make that process work. At the same time, editing it can be a little bit of minefield of clicks. So we're going in three or four different layers in some instances to make changes. I think it's a case of watch this space as Squarespace, as they have done with many other products, refine it as they go through it and make it a better product. I've been involved in some of the feedback sessions in the past, and I fully believe that some of these kinks will be ironed out. But in the meantime, we can still use lists to good effect. Probably one of the main limitations is where it's different to, say, summary blocks. As shown here, this is an example of a summary block. A summary block will feed through content from other pages. So, for example, we can create one blog and we only have to update that content once and then feed it through via summary blocks into multiple pages. A very, very powerful feature. That, alas, isn't available with lists at the moment. So if we wanted to duplicate and replicate this list feature on another page, yes, we'd have to re-upload all of that information. There's currently no way around that at the moment with lists. We're looking into it at the moment to see if we can create something, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's a feature enabled by Squarespace over the next 12 months to two years. Okay, without any further ado, let's dive in. So I'm going to click on edit. We're actually in the admin area at the moment. So we're on the home page of the admin. That's where we can see this menu on the left. I've picked our gridiron template to work with for two reasons. One, this shows a nice range of lists, galleries, and summary blocks on the home page alone. And also, second point is we're getting very close to Super Bowl. And I thought it'd be nice to use this as an example. So let's click edit. And now we're in editing mode. And first of all, let's find out how we can identify the different areas. So this, even though it looks like a slideshow gallery, is actually a list section, which gives us the option to have this card feature overlaying the image. We'll come back to that in a minute. Then below, we've got two separate summary blocks, one that's linked to the blog, another one that's linked to a calendar. So think of it this way. Uh, blogs are always looking in the past, calendars are always looking into the future. And so you can have, um, I've done this with uh, local rugby teams, for example, clubs where we've gone with a fixture list created via the calendar. And then when the fixtures passed, we then upload match reports and put them into a blog called match reports. So there is that continual flow of future turning into the past. Maybe it's not as slick as a bespoke solution that's built from the ground up for that particular feature, but it, it works really well. Having said that, this module's all about lists, so we'll move on from how to get the most out of summary blocks. But to identify the summary blocks, we can see it says summary as we roll over each of the sections. It doesn't with lists, or not at least not with that one. And same with this is another list. And then we've got galleries as well. It would be nice if there was a overlay blue tab with white text on saying which of the areas are, but it doesn't for both galleries and lists. So how do we separate them and tell them apart? Well, lists have edit content here, and then it has the pencil icon, whilst galleries will have an image icon. So now we can identify these two sections as galleries. That's a list. These are summary blocks because of the tab here. And then finally, we've got another list at the top. Hope that makes sense. Rewind, have another look through it just to make sure you've got it clear in your head. 
When you're building from scratch, it probably doesn't make that much of a difference. But if you've had someone to help you with the design of your website or design it for you, then it could be really handy to know the difference between each of those sections if you were tasked with editing it going forward. So now I'm going to have a look at this initial list and click on edit content. So we can see here now that we've got a section information. So uh, if we look at this one, for example, this uses a section title. There's also an option to put a description below it. Whilst this one, we're using it as a slideshow gallery, which has just got one image in to start with, but we may go with additional images in the future. So that's why the title's greyed out. Same with the button option below, because we'd lose that compact nature, the compact style that we want it sandwiched nicely between the masthead and then the start of the, the rest of the information on the page. Everything else is ticked here because we want to show image for the item. That's essential for a hero unit or banner. We want to show the title, which is what appears here. Then we go into the body text, that secondary sentence there in a different text style, and then a call to action button. So instead of one button for the entire section, we've done it image by image. But you may be saying, well, there's only one image. Fair point. At this point, we could add a second image in, which will allow for arrow sliders to slide from one item to the next. So let's have a go at adding one in. We can see now that these arrows have appeared. If I move that one, we can see there's another one to the right. So I could go into the second item and I'm going to search for an image to drop in. That's the one we're using already. We'll go for this one as our secondary banner. Okay, so our image is in place. We can use the focal point as we can with other areas like galleries and summary blocks to get the focal point for our image. Let me just bring it down a little bit. There we go. Okay. So then we can change the title. Can't remember if I went with all caps, I think I did. There we go. We've now added some content to fit nicely in that section. That's ultimately it. If I click on edit in the top section, we can then reorder them. So I can change which image appears first. And then we can go into the design section, which we'll be going into more detail in the next chapter. But this gives us the option to change how the content looks. And I'm just going to flick through just a few different options. We've got infinite scroll, which is the option that we've used in the player section below. We, it will just continually scroll through it, which is a really nice feature. Also, there's an option to show adjacent slides. Now, this one can look a little bit messy for this particular feature, but if you wanted a quick preview of what's coming up next, that can work nicely there. And then we can go into styles. Lots of information about spacing positioning of arrows, for example. So here we wouldn't want the arrows interfering with these content cards, so we can move them to the bottom. But I'm just going to leave that for now. And yeah, we'll be jumping back in and having another look at this in more detail in the next chapter.